severely hurt. But yeah, it came out pretty rad. Yeah, and that's then, uh, very just cool. just sort of sits here. Sometimes I whip her out for special. <laughs> I get out my fur coat and whip her out on special events. Uh huh. Get your nice shoes out. Yeah, but these are my nice <laughs> shoes. I wore my nice shoes this evening. Hey. <laughs> Nicest <laughs> shoes I got. All right. All right. Welcome back. Black Magic TV. It's a cool. Um, it was supposed to be warm outside, and for some reason it got cold again, so that's cool. But with me tonight, we have a uh, car guy, car c- member of the automotive community. We got He's an artist. World-renowned artist, I guess. nationally known. I guess we could, <laughs> at least nationally known. I'll go that far. Well, I, I, that's you on that. You were on the PBR thing, so that's uh-huh. national. Yep. Um, just did it. Was part of the parade of hearts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mr. Ben Walters is here. Most of you will know him by his Instagram. If you're in the city, you know him. You just don't know him. That's what I was trying to explain to everyone. <laughs> like Nico's like. Which guy is it again? And I'm like trying to like say, I don't know. How do you pronounce your Instagram handle? It's Tandem Segway. Yeah, there you go. And I was just like, Nico, I don't know English good. Like, I can't, <laughs> I don't understand what it is. And he's like, if I said that, Nico would be like, oh, I know exactly who you're talking about. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But uh, welcome. Thanks for coming over. It was Thank a little you. bit of a last for minute thing. Actually, you hit me up and I've been meaning to hit you up. And I, that's cool. why I'm just like, when that happens now, I'm just like, yes. Immediately, we will do this. Let's just do it <laughs> now. Do it like, come on over. Yeah, because otherwise, if I don't, then what happens is time lapses, and then it's like, eh. and then even earlier tonight, I hit up my buddy Stevie Cruz. Same thing. We've talked about it a hundred times, and Stevie's super interesting. We've known each other forever. He's a DJ, musician, and I was just like, dude, this week, like, pick a day. Just tell me what night you want to come over, and I'll make it happen. Like, we'll do it that way now. Yeah. Because there's a ready? list of people that I've been trying to, like, cool. and then I forget, like, and you've been on the list. I have a giant list, and you're <laughs> on it. Like, we, I sat I down that. with Nico, and we, like, went through, and we're like, who, we're, like, looking at Instagram, like, who in the city should we talk to? Very cool. But we met in person, I guess, last year at the Cars and Coffee. Yeah, Cars and Coffee, or the... The Gearheads and, my, oh, excuse gearheads me, and Gearheads grounds. and Grounds. That's where we met at. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like the name of it. You come up with that? Yeah, I did, with the help of artificial... Let me piss off a lot of people. I used AI to make that name. Whatever. I use AI all the time, it's dude. It's good. I saw earlier where like people get really mad about it. And like like that artwork that um, Nico did for the Boogie Down, mm-hmm. that literally came from me like making AI art. and Because it's never perfect. No. But what I think it's a good tool for is like like that image that you saw on my computer, mm-hmm. like the desktop image. Yeah. That's AI art. Um it's uh what it's really good for is getting an idea from a person that can't draw their idea to the person who's creating something for them. Like you get the words and the description of the thing and like a idea of something in your head that you can manifest in a way that it can give you a visualization in a way you can't create. Right. And then I can go to, I can bring it to you and say, Hey dude, this is the inspirado, but I (laughs) I want it done. Inspirado. I want it done in your art style. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was trying to make, I told, I I found one and I, I got it to where I had a really cool van. I'll show them to you afterwards. I I got it to where it had a bitchin looking van, (laughs) right? That was pretty solid. And like, the words were just never right, right? Uh-huh. And so then I was like, well, fuck. And so I sent it to Nico. I was like, hey, can we just redo the letter? Will you overlay letters over where the words are and make it correct? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I'll do something with it. And then two days later, he's like, oh, bud, I got I got it done for you. And I'm thinking it's going to be this thing with just new letters on it, which I was cool with. And then he sends me this like basically like Roach Studios t-shirt graphic from the 70s, it's which is so even more rad. bitch. It's so rad, uh-huh. dude. even better. But I have it. I have like just the image without the all the words and shit for the show. Yeah. So I can just use that as like a universal deal. I'm actually we're printing up a sheet of iron transfers, like old school transfer cool. sheets, and then we're. I think we're gonna do a run of them as like screen printed shirts. Love that. So he's gonna. I told him. I told him do a four color. 
Mm-hmm. I want to do a four color a to keep it old school, right? Like, let's do a four color and keep it old school and make it cool. But he just knows what I like, and like he just hit every mark. Like, gotta have the chrome letters. I want he knows that. <laughs> like, I want the chrome on there. Like, put the fucking multicolor. You know, do a color fade somewhere, and I'm set. You know, what I mean? put smoke out the tires. Like, he knows everything I like. So. You gotta Where have little like, tricks fuck, in he's there. He's my little brother. You know what I mean? That's like, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've I've thrown a couple things into like a AI art generator too just to get an idea of how it interprets things. And I found that it's useful for coming up with ideas for how to lay things out. Like if you have words to describe an idea and you throw them in there and it gives you something that's a jumbled mess, you can then kind of add parameters to it and kind of request more from it. And if you play with it enough, it can give you things that are useful as a starting point. Yes. And like, using it to generate a layout or a composition of something that maybe I can't visualize, but I have the pieces I want to put together. That's, that's cool. And it's been useful. Yeah. And that's exactly right. Like that's exactly how I've been using it. It it allows, like I said, it allows me as a non, like I do art. I just don't do, I don't illustrate. I'm not good at it. I tried and tried and tried. Like my hands just don't work that way it's not a learned skill you know what i mean yeah, like I, I, mine just like to do that right <laughs> like me, drawing a car like nico did mm-hmm. that is not just a learned skill it's not like doing body work or like yeah it's no different than like when i paint a motorcycle tank it's when i do those crazy paint jobs that's not really a learned skill it there's techniques you can learn mm-hmm. but there's also the application of it is like not it's a practiced and earned skill also right but it's also uh it's each i I could teach you the same techniques i use and you would come up with something totally different than what i do yeah that's the thing nobody everybody does things a different way Mm -hmm. like i i could i have things that i won't show people on how i do it because i do them so different than other people it's just that one little thing that like lets me it's your stand, stand apart out. and yeah. make I, I've learned how to make a lot of I try to make a lot of depth in my graphics when I do like panels so that magic eye gas tanks for motorcycles e- man yeah that <laughs> way uh I do I like to I give it a lot of depth so that's it cool. doesn't look I don't like flat. it looking flat mm-hmm. you know what I mean and that's how a lot of it comes out but it is in all rights it is a flat panel so yeah it's going to look like that. But like, I wish I could paint black. I love black velvet paintings, but like, I just, <laughs> I tried, I, I'm, I, I learned, have. I made black velvet canvases uh-huh. and tried to do it and just couldn't figure it out. Um, gave it, gave one to Nico and I had him paint, uh, for my ex-girlfriend. He like painted her dog. Yeah. Like on black velvet. It's fucking sick. She still has it. I know it's, it's sick. I bet and it he's is. done a couple others since then, and they're sick. But I just couldn't figure it out. Now, on I can show you, like I airbrush on canvas and do like these like skull things, and I figured out how to do that pretty good, and kind of have my own style. Yeah. Um, and I can illustrate kind of with an airbrush, but drawing something, yeah, I can't I've never do tried it. an airbrush. Right. It's cool. It's fun. It's it totally looks different. Like fun. It's just like barrier to entry is cost. I just never went out and bought one. Yeah. They're cheaper now than when I, I guess I first thought about it, but yeah, never gotten around to trying it. Yeah. It's a cool, it's a very cool tool. And it's one of those things Nico and I've always talked about, like you can get to a point where like, he's at a point where he'll use like everything. Like if he's like, he'll paint something and he'll use the airbrush. He'll use a paintbrush. Yeah. He might grab the lettering brush. He might have one shot on there with something else. I love that. Like, so you can, you can, it's just another tool to uh-huh. use to create this effect. I'm playing with stuff like that right now. Like doing collage stuff and I do linole- linoleum block prints. Okay. So, uh, block prints over collage with like paint marker. And I've got like old vintage stamps with like individual letters 
I'm trying to fix right. the little stamp holder for it so I can use those too. Yeah. I think those are cool. So playing with mixed physical media is fun in yeah. all sorts of ways. So right. I totally get where he's going with that. And using different tools for one project is always fun and exploring it is something I enjoy too. So even the, the black velvet paintings, I've never tried it, but if I found a blank one, I'd probably grab it and give it a shot. Yeah. And it was a weird thing where like we forever we were like, can you buy these? Like, where do you get these? And we couldn't find them. (laughs) So I just, I went and bought all the shit to make canvases. Uh, And then I, I just figured it out and stretched them myself. So start. And then I, the first time I did it, I got the wrong kind of velvet. So I was like, (laughs) okay. And then I went back and I found a different kind and I used it. And the second kind was the money. That's the money. He's the money. (laughs) And I need, I still have a bunch. I need to make some more and just give them. I thought about like making them and giving them away to people and then being like, hey, paint these and then I'm going to have an art show. And take them all to Lucky Boys. Yeah, and then just take them all to Lucky Boys. <laughs> just drop them off. Everybody's upset and jealous that I got the Hank Williams Jr. Um, black Velvet off Marketplace the other day. Oh, were they trying to get it? Oh, everybody was trying to get it. <laughs> the guy told me he, he had a... Uh, he said he had like 500 messages. He listed it for 25 bucks. And I saw it the minute he messaged it. It just popped up with a notification being like, Black Velvet. And I was like, boom. And I was like, I will take this. Enter. And then immediately I responded, I'm actually, and in all, and, uh, and to be real, I'll give you $50 because <laughs> 25 is too cheap. And then That's he, messaged, got it. he messaged me back at like 5 a.m. as an older guy. He's like, yeah, you got it, dude. What time, when do you want to come get it? I was like, I'll be there this afternoon. Nice. He told me where. I left work uh, a little early. Drove all the way down to Nevada, Missouri. How far is that? It's like an hour and a half. Damn. Yeah. I okay. jumped in the van, drove an hour and a half, and uh, picked it up. And when I was there, I, I pulled out 50 bucks. He goes, no, I just want 25 for it. And I just went, dude, I'll give you, I told you I'd give you 50. He's like, no, no, it's cool. He's like... He's like, you wouldn't believe how many messages I got. He started telling me. I was like, oh, yeah, everybody wants us to resell it. Oh, I'm and he's sure. like, oh. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is like, this is a crazy painting. Like, you don't see, like, this is like, it's very weird to find specific people other than Elvis. Because I've never seen another Hank Williams Jr. Uh, fucking black velvet painting. It's also say, gigantic. It's like this tall. It's a big it? one. It's upstairs. Oh, it's it hanging is. up. I'll show <laughs> it to you after we're done. That's cool. But uh, yeah, so I gave him the twenty five, and then I, I posted it up, and everybody was like, "Oh, you got that? Oh, you got that? I like, <laughs> yeah, I did. Like you guys sleep on shit, man. Yeah. I bought this van, that red van. I bought that for five hundred bucks. I mean, I don't know how well it runs or anything. Uh, but... <laughs> it runs good now. It didn't run great when I first got it. Oh, there it, you go. It shut off on the way home, and they had problems, and the guy knew it, and everybody else was like, "Oh." Oh, I see you got that van. And I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, they're like, I was like, I bought it for 500 bucks. Well, he, t- he asked me if I wanted it. Okay. Well, you should have bought it. Like, why are you telling me? You know? It sounded like you didn't want it. Yeah. It sounded like you didn't <laughs> want it. Well, you wanted 15. I'm like, well, it sounds like you don't know how to negotiate. Like, uh... But I got it. It needed a control module and a, uh, the fuel pump relay wiring was a little hokey. So I had to get a new plug in and fix that. And then I, uh, the alternator bracket was broken and the alternator was just like hanging out in there. So it had some, I did some shit to it. A few odds and ends. Yeah, I've done some <laughs> stuff too. I dumped it. I, I probably put about 500 bucks into it. Um, oh, that's still but it's got less 114, than 1500 Yeah, it's got 114,000 miles and it still needs a little more love, but I jumped in it and drove it to Nevada, Missouri. I charged the AC on it the other day and the AC got you there and back. The AC is blowing cold, man. <laughs> I haven't had AC in a long time, let alone like, yeah. Blowing that cold. So it was nice. Windows are tinted. It's a good little van. Cool. Solid van. Same as the blue one? Exact same. Just two <laughs> years newer. So it's got okay. a better it's got a better motor in it. Mm. But the blue one, that's my baby. I got crushed velvet for it. We're gonna put crushed velvet headliner oh, in it. I got a billet steering wheel from a guy that we're building a car for at work. I'm on the hunt for some like I need some like nineties billet wheels. Like some blades or some... I can't remember what they looked like, but my dad had an Astro, that same body style, yeah. when I was a kid. 
and it had like those '90s wheels on it. Yep, it, it, like a little wider than the body was. Right, it stuck out. It had that little poke to it, and um, I think they were too big because <laughs> we we would go to the lake with it, and he would haul the boat, yep. and that thing would bottom out all the time. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not bottoming out on the ground, but like wheel rub on the inside, wheel, tire rub. Would rub. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the new one has a tow hitch on it, but I'm going to take it off. Because somebody's like, oh, you can build your little platform to carry shit. And I'm like, dude, I'm just going to run into something. I can barely <laughs> drive else the blue. Run into it. I've backed the blue one into so many fences that I've been backed up to. I backed it into my own fence the, the other things day. Things are short, too. No, those are extended. Oh, they I got, are? Those are XTs. Okay. I so see. So they're extended versions. Yeah, my dad's was a shorty. Yeah, my buddy Nick has one that's a shorty. But Nick's has his lowered. And I'd like to do that to the blue one. I'd like to slam it down. That'd be cool. And make it all customized. I feel like I saw, was it a yellow Astro at one of the events last summer? And it had like the whole back of it was decked out with like fiberglass paneling that was all wavy with subwoofers in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, like is a car, there is one of those around. It's like bright yellow. Yeah. There, that, car, that is a car that exists That thing here. is wild. Yeah. And there's some cool... Uh, there's another one. There's a flat black one yeah. that he goes up to the um, the Casey Showdown shows. I don't know if you know Denny. They did that. They did the. They helped Zach with the Wild West Showdown last year. I didn't go to that. I didn't know about it until the day it happened, mm. and I started seeing people sharing pictures. Yeah, Man, I wish I had known. In Zach's advance. been doing that thing forever. Yeah, that looks cool. That's the sort of thing I want to go to. Yeah, we got the trophy right there. Nice. Suck it, losers. <laughs> you two, want it with that little pink car, right? No. Two white boys, me and Eric, two white boys rolled up to the Lowrider show, won best 1960s car with a, a, a 60 Biscayne. Okay. <laughs> that was static dropped. It was like, <laughs> felt pretty good about that. When you fucking take, and then we were top, well, we were top 20, and then we were, then Eric got, Top best 1960s out of the 1960s cars because we won that and I was like oh like we I was like hell yeah we felt pretty good because <laughs> me and him built that car yeah, and I cool. painted it and then it was like uh, and some other friends helped and uh, it was like well shit like I'm telling Eric I'm reading this and they started calling off the 60s you know each class I said dude you have to be one of you have to. I said, I'm pretty sure you're about to win another trophy. And he's like, nah. And I was like, dog, you got top 20 out of everybody. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that means in the 1960s, I that there would have to be six other people that had 1960s cars to like beat you out. And that's not the case. Like, you're at least in the category. Right. They're going to say something about your car. Yeah. Like they're going to, you're, and then he won, they came to like first place in 1960s. Like Eric Myers is like, oh shit, we just like won first place. And I went to the, I was talking shit at the low rider <laughs> shop the week before. Like you, you guys are about to get your asses whooped dog. And they're like, shut up. Tyler. <laughs> and then we were there. I was like, I fucking told you, I told you we would win. Win. manifested it yeah and there's not a lot like i'm not a big trophy guy at car shows but like that event is like a big deal for the the car culture here and specifically like the low riding culture yeah. so it's cool to be recognized by like those are like peers you know i consider sure. those people peers yeah and so it's like to be recognized by them and i've known zach forever so it's for them to like look at eric's car and be like oh shit this is actually like they respect it, even mm -hmm. though it's not like a traditional low rider. Yeah, it's it's cool. cool. Yeah, it came out good. It's sick. He put that chrome window tint on there, and that blows everybody's minds. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Is that the silver with the red interior? Gold. It's like a gold color, but yes, that's it with the red interior. It has the silver. I put like a Watson fade around it and silver metal flake where okay. all the chrome trim goes. But it's like a light gold. It's like a. a it's a Ford color, actually. I can't think of the name of it, but it's very like it's a pewtery gold color. It's okay. not a. It's not a like. It doesn't pop. It, yeah, it's, it's not, not bling like bling. gold. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not like a yellow gold. Uh, but uh, what? Wh did you grow? Are you from? You're from here, right? Like I've been here since 2016. Okay. I grew up in Des Moines. Oh, okay. You're from Des Moines. Mm -hmm. We know some people in Des Moines. Yeah, uh, Jeff cool Wright, town. Church of Choppers. 
Church of Choppers. Jeff yeah, Brown. you know uh, Kung Fu Taco, the bar. Uh, yeah. So the guy that owns that, he has a thing called uh, Church of Choppers. They have a T-shirt company called FTW Company. Okay. Jeff, Jeff and Fatty, they they rule. And then they had GT Race Car Bar. Yep, I've been to GT. Harry Mary's back in the day. Heard of Harry Mary's. Yeah, I, I never I went. Was... Eric went. So Eric used to live in Des Moines. Okay. He's not from there. He he was a traveling salesman. Yeah. But he lived in Des Moines for a while. So he met, he knew Jeff and all them. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah. So he, Eric knows a lot. But he took me up there to meet those guys like years and years ago. Yeah. But they rule. That Des Moines is a cool place. It is a cool place. I would say it's a great place to grow up. Yeah. So you, did you go to college down here or you just were like, what I'm, brought you to the Metro, I guess? Um, I wanted something new. Right. I was looking for a change of scenery and cost of living here is pretty on par with what I was familiar with in Des Moines. Maybe a little more costly, but like I was looking at other places and cost of living is just wild. Yeah. So it's close to home. Cost of living was relatively the same. And it was easy for me to transfer with my job at the time. So I had a job when I got here. So moved to the plaza. I worked on the plaza. I walked to work every day. I didn't have a car for five years. No shit. Yeah. So I just got around on the bus, the streetcar. I walked. Um, like, I'm into bikes. I've had bikes the whole time I've been here. So that's great. Yeah. But. Yeah. City, are you good. still doing that job? Do you have a day job, Ben? Yeah. Uh, I repair Apple computers. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So you do like computer repair stuff. Yep. Is that what you were doing back then too? Uh, yeah. I worked for Apple for nine years almost. Oh, sick. So I worked there in Des Moines and transferred here to the Apple store on the plaza. Yeah. And I have since left there and I still do computer repairs, Apple certified, but at a different company. Yeah. Sick. What's that like? That's cool. I just turn screws all day. Yeah. Fixing shit. Dude. Guys, I just found the official uh, Blackmagic <laughs> TV iPhone repair plug, bro. <laughs> you don't know how many people ask me, like, who can I fix? Who can fix phones that we can trust? And I'm like, dude, I don't even know. Because I've I, my phone now is fucked up because I took it somewhere and they just did not do a great job. Yeah. So the place where I work is called Synetic Technologies. At Synetic, there is a Apple authorized repair center called Tech Grove. Okay. It's in North KC, and you can walk in just like it's the Apple store and ask them to repair your screen. And it is an Apple certified repair process. They use Apple parts, wow. and it is all official. So you can have it repaired the way it's supposed to be repaired. Yeah. It's not as busy as walking into the Apple store. Yeah. So well, and cool. I didn't have it. I didn't have it fixed at the Apple Store. I went to this dude I know. Uh, I went to that I break you <laughs> fix place yep. once, and then the second time, I do have a guy that's pretty solid. This dude Walter, he has his own company in Mission. Okay, and I just found him like looking up cell phone repair, and he helped, he hooked us. He hooked me up. He takes care of you. Like he'll take care of you. Like. Right then. And yeah. it's, it's all probably about the same price no matter where you go. Yeah, I'm not sure about difference in price and that right. sort of thing. But, but it it was like, now it's at the point where like my back screen, my back glass is broken. Uh, the bat, I can't keep a battery in mm-hmm. the thing to last. And then the fr- like the front screen, I've broken it like four <laughs> times. So also, I probably just need to buy a new phone. It might be time to upgrade. But then that's coming up with the cash. To, like, to buy an iPhone is crazy. Yeah. I thought about switching to Google. <laughs> I mean, they sell twelve hundred dollar phones too. Yeah, but that Google Pixel is supposed to be pretty fire, and it's only like six hundred bucks for the new Google. I Pixel will say phone. that I can appreciate the hardware. Yeah, I people say it's like pretty. It's the best so far. It, it, they say that it's the best competitor so far oh. for whatever the new iPhone is, yeah, and then you read like, it's like. There, there's people that are like, dude, the new iPhone is just for it's just for vanity to say I got it. They're like it's still about the same as the one two years ago. I mean, yeah, I have a 13 Pro. I don't have any reason to upgrade to it, whatever the newest one is right now. Yeah, um, give me a reason and I'll think about it. Right, and I think I need because I have a, a XS. Okay. <laughs> like an, dude, I only got that because I ran over my iPhone. Uh, uh, 6S. So I had a 6S. I think your 10S is probably from 2016 or 17. Yeah. So you had that a little while. 
but I got it used. Okay. My buddy had it, and I think what he he broke the screen on it. But what happened was he wanted a certain phone, and then I think his wife told him no, so he got that one because it was free. Mm-hmm. And then he broke it and was like, "See, I told you, let me. I, I should just get the other one." So he went and bought the phone he wanted. <laughs> but he had that sitting in a drawer, and I was like, "Fuck, my phone is fried." He's like, "Here, just have this. You got to get the screen fixed on it." So I fixed the screen on it. So it cost you the screen price. And- yeah, but then since then I've put two batteries. But those people that fixed it the first time. They didn't take the peel off oh, no. of part of the screen, so it delaminated the screen I had them put on. Uh, but I think it also fried the battery because of that. It got too hot. I think it fries the battery because the back... I think when the back glass breaks, I think mm, it compromises the phone, honestly. I mean, it certainly compromises the uh, water and dust seal. Yeah. Well, they're not waterproof, but water resistance. Yeah. Once it got holes in it. Yeah, it's done for. And yep. I keep it in like an otter box case. just. No. I always it have helps. an otter. I, yeah, I work in the shop. Like, dude, you I got have to. to. Yeah, you got to. You need to get paint and metal fragments and all sorts of other whatever's floating oh, around. Oh, my in phone the shop. is disgusting. <laughs> if we took the phone out of the case, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, dude, it's filthy. I guarantee I've seen worse. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. So, did, now, how did you get into doing that work? Did you just like be like, oh, I'm going to get a job at Apple? And my best friend had gotten a job at Apple and referred me. So I went and worked on his referral, got hired in 2011. My, I think my official date of hire at Apple was the day that Steve Jobs died. No shit. That was kind of wild. Yeah. But he referred me. I got the job. He left and went and did other things. And then decided he wanted to come back. So I then in turn referred him back. So we both got a referral bonus off of one, one oh, another shit. from Apple. Yeah. So that was cool. So just on the job training. Oh, yeah. Didn't, um, didn't everything know. I learned about uh, doing repairs and service and all that stuff is on the job. Like they're really good about training and it's ongoing. Yeah. So like every time there's a new product, you learn about it. Yeah. And that's not just like you're, you're fixing computers, tablets. Tablets, they don't do a whole lot of repairs on. Right. Like, if it's broken, they generally will replace those. Right. But phones are pretty repairable. Uh, computers are very repairable. Yeah. Most of what I do now is MacBooks. Right. Like, that's the thing that we get the most of and needs most fixing. So, that's what I fix. Damn, so I was in there preaching to you about my PC. You're just like... <laughs> <laughs> the no, devil. nothing against it. Honestly... <laughs> It does many things much better than my Mac would be able to do. And for good reason. Like, yeah, it's they're like competitive. A, yeah. It, it's weird that um, it's like a weird thing. It's almost like Milwaukee and DeWalt, right? Like, mm-hmm. like if you talk to like any electrician buddy of mine, they all use Milwaukee tools. Oh, yeah. And now Milwaukee's sort of become the staple in the automotive industry also got that brand loyalty man dude people find a thing they like it's not just brand loyalty with them it's the i mean dude i beat the shit out of them (laughs) tools and they last for electric tools they last um but it uh it's very similar i think in that because i was when i went to get that audio box yesterday i was at big dudes and he's like the guy kept talking to me about max 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 i'm like yo player i ain't never using no mac dude (laughs) and he's like what i was like you can't a mac can't do what i need it to do like he's like that's that's not true i'm like no dude it i was like dude i i can't put a capture card that i can plug four cameras into in in a macbook like i can't I can't do maybe the Mac Pro, but if you want to spend twelve grand on a computer, right, right, it's like and so I was trying to explain to him like, dude, I built something. I needed a, a all around. I, I built something that I can play games on because I didn't want to use a console anymore. Mm-hmm. I built something I could edit video on seamlessly without having to worry about like it catching up or lagging right i built something i have fucking four uh mvme hard drives on my motherboard 
So like I can swap those out for bigger ones if I want. I have endless storage on my PC right now. Endless storage. And which is what I need because these I mean, files are gigantic. <laughs> the shoot vi- 6K? The, yeah, the video <laughs> files when I'm shooting in 4K or whatever, even just regular, it's they're they're big files. Absolutely. Um terabytes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, I suck up a terabyte hard drive in interview almost. That's wild. Yeah. But then I compress it down to a different file and then I just delete the raw footage, you know? But, uh, yeah. And then, but that guy, it was, you know, they were like, oh, well, we, we use Macs. Uh, everything I do is on Mac. And like the recording industry, the music industry is just like, really, like, they're like, if you don't have a Mac, then you aren't shit. And I'm like, okay, well, I just, <laughs> I guess I'm not shit, dude. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not fucking Diplo over here. I'm not recording music. I just need to have like good. Yeah. It does what you audio. need to do. Yeah. Like I just need people talking to sound good. Yeah, I'm not I, trying to make music, dude. Like I quit doing that in my twenties. I'm done playing in bands. Yeah. We talked about playing in another band, but it just seems like so much fucking work. I wish I knew how to play an instrument. It's not hard, dude. You could figure that is a, that. It's like anything that's a learned skill skill up into, and then there's a point where it's like, yeah, anybody can learn the chords and play, learn how to play songs, but then writing music is a whole other thing. If you just want to know how to play guitar and like diddle some tunes, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, I could show you three chords and you could go off to the races and teach yourself at this point, but I've just never picked something up and learned it, but it's cool. I appreciate it. I love music. Yeah, but I'm Windows till I die. Hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on PCs, man. I get it. Like it's it's also the cost, dude. Like uh-huh. like that laptop for what that laptop cost me. That doesn't touch uh, a, a a MacBook. I yeah. can't buy a MacBook for eight hundred bucks that I can edit six K video on. No, you cannot. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> so. That's just the thing. It was like, dude, how could I not buy this? It was almost, it's just like anything. Like these mics are a hundred bucks, right? Like, but everybody's like, oh, you have to use these sure SM7Bs. And it's like, yeah, they're fucking $400 a piece, dude. I could also pick up audio too. Yeah. (laughs) They, they sound just fine to me. Yeah. And now with that built in, like that built in compressor thing on this audio box, it should be rad. Like this is the first test, everyone. First, uh, how do I sound? Yeah, for ooh, is it warm? <laughs> uh, this is the first test with the new audio box. But I'm getting ready to go out of town, and I got a bunch of interviews set up. I'm going to Torque Fest, which is a big car show up in Iowa. I saw you shared that you were going to that, and I looked at how far away it is. I was like, man, was that five and a half hours from here? It's seven hours. Oh, man. Yeah. It's in Dubuque. Have fun. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's going to be a blast. Uh, and then he used to do a show called The Iron Invasion, and the last time they did it, that used to be in Woodstock, Illinois. Oh. So we used to drive, Nico and I would drive all the way past Chicago to go to that car show and set up and shit. Tr- it was fun, though. It's okay. Dude, I've been going to them shows. Oh, I rode the train there once when I was all fucked up on drugs. I didn't have no driver's license. Mm-hmm. I couldn't drive. I didn't even have a car that I could drive there. And John paid for me to have a, he wouldn't buy me a plane ticket because he's afraid I'd get arrested. He's like, if I give you a plane ticket, you're going to get arrested because you're going to bring drugs. Like, I don't trust you. So here, so he bought me a fucking Amtrak ticket, dude. (laughs) Amtrak don't care. I thought they cared. I learned very quickly. They do not care. And I like (laughs) had all the weed on me when I got on that fucking. Oh, man. uh, I had a giant bag of weed in my bag when I got on the Amtrak in KC. And I rode all the way to Chicago, sitting next to this dude that was like, fuck, it was like one of those years where they thought the world was going to end for some reason. So this dude was an artist and he had all these prints and I have a bunch of them somewhere because he gave them to me. He's like, uh, like he did like fantasy art that you buy at like a state fair. You know what I mean? And he was like traveling back to Tennessee He's like, I'm going to go sit in front of this, it's like some mountain. He's like, and if I see it start to crumble and fall because it's the end of the world, I'm going to kill myself. I was like, oh, this dude, I think this dude's just going to go kill himself. Like, I don't think it's really weird. (laughs) It was a weird ride. And he was an alcoholic, of course. Uh, And he he just kept buying me beers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sitting there. And then we, every time we'd stop, I would get a stoned. 
So between me getting a stone and then this dude buying twenty dollar Budweisers for us, and this guy bought so much beer, I was like, "Why are you on the Amtrak?" You two just in a whirlwind on the train. Yeah, like I, okay. And then he just kept buying me beers, and we got shit house. I bet. And then we got <laughs> shit trained. To, yeah, shit trained, and that was a long ride. We got to Chicago, and it was like an overnight deal. I was going like, to say, how long is a ride on the I think Amtrak I left at the night in the, in the nighttime and got to Chicago the next morning. It was like a 12 hour train ride or something because they stop. That thing stops yeah, that's constantly, dude. But you're the not train. even skipping time zones in that route. No, we were just going northward. <laughs> and it was from down at City Market, you know what I mean? It was weird. Mm-hmm. But I, I was just, I had a blast with that dude. And then he got really pissed when they quit serving beer and finally we both passed out. And- <laughs> But then that was weird because I had to get to Chicago and I had to leave that train station and go find the the local train station and get on a train that would take me out to the suburbs. It's a separate train so, station? Yeah, it's a it's a local train because huh. they have like the local trains I there. I see, yeah. So I had to jump on that thing and ride it another two hours. It was like a two-hour ride to get to Woodstock, which is really only like 45 minutes from Chicago proper. In a car. In a car, yeah. Stopping every. 150 feet. Luckily, two friends, Brian Scott and then Candace, they were in Chicago. They had gone to see D. Antwerd. And uh-huh. yeah. And so they were in Chicago and I messaged them. I'm like, yo, when are you guys leaving? They're like, we're leaving Sunday. I'm like, yo, let me ride with you. And she's like, what? I was like, I'm in fucking the suburbs. I'm in Woodstock. I was like, I'll ride the train down Sunday morning and you let me ride with you guys back home. Because I can't ride the fucking Am. I'm not riding the Amtrak back. <laughs> not running like, that guy again. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, okay. So I just met them and rode back with them. Oh, it was so lucky. much faster. I was uh-huh. like, oh my God, this is night and day. This is way better. Because yeah. they had weed, so we were just getting stoned the whole time. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's a good time. <laughs> back in the party days. Yeah, uh, that's cool. But yeah, I spent a lot of time in Iowa. I like hanging out there. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to live there, but it's a fun time. to. I like Davenport a lot. Davenport's cool. I think I've been to Davenport once or twice like as a kid but i don't have a lot of memory of it yeah um des moines i grew up there and that's what i know yeah yeah des moines sick um i got some friends in des moines uh other than jeff and them uh josh and sabrina they have a motorcycle shop they've lived there forever and it's cool. I've met people cool from all over the country at going to those shows because I've oh, gone yeah. to them since the beginning. So it's like a national thing. People come from all over. That's cool. I mean, I met you at a car show, so. Yeah. Well, that's go. how I met, like, I know Max Grundy. Like, Max Grundy will be there, the artist. Okay. And I'm going to interview him. Like, so I'm taking the set and rebuilding. I have a suite oh, at a racetrack. So I'm going to take, like, the neon. I'm going to take the chairs, um, the carpet, and a couple other things. And I'm going to put make a set up there. Yeah, and it's then, easy enough to transport. Right, and so I, I'm i taking the laptop, and I'm uh-huh. going to be able to edit the podcast, so I don't... I have a bunch of cards, but cool. how many... I mean, you can only have so many yeah. SDs that hook to your camera, you know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. fucking expensive, but it'll be a good time. Eric's going. Yeah. Uh, another buddy of ours, Dave Sprinkle, he's going, so there'll be a bunch of people from here that are going, so That's it's cool. a good time. But, okay, so did you go to... Did you go to college or anything like that? Did you I'm go to in art college school? currently. Oh, you're in college here now. Yeah, I'm back in school. I'm okay. on my. I went to Johnson County for two years, and then I've transferred to UMKC, and I'm currently in the Urban Planning and Design program. Okay. They just announced this last week that they are adding a Bachelor's of Architecture program in house at UMKC. That's what I wanted when I transferred. Okay. They only offered a transfer program from UMKC to K State for to architecture. Do for architecture. So now you'll be able to do. I won't have to leave and go to Kansas. Right. You can just stay there and. Right. Because how old are you? Thirty six. Oh, okay. So yeah. You're... Yeah, I went to college once before, and I was like, I don't know what I want to do, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go get a job, be an adult for a while, figure out what I want. Yeah. And when did the art? come in was that something that you've always done i've always been into art yeah yeah it's always been more of a hobby thing trying to figure out how to make it lucrative is more of a recent pursuit yeah 
and finding things like the PBR can design contest, right? Free entry and there's a payout, there's a prize. Cool. I don't have to do anything but be creative and I could win. I'll try that. I yeah. tried that three years in a row and I got it. That's fucking awesome. I just kept trying. There was no barrier to entry. Yeah. So I think over three years, I did 36 different designs for the PBR contest. And then finally, they snagged one. Buckshot approach. Just kept yeah. firing until it hit something. Yeah. It worked. I guess it did. Yeah. I've seen you <laughs> found the can the other day. Uh, yeah. Not long ago, right? You finally found one of the cans in the oh, wild. Uh, that's been a while ago. It might have been like a memory that I shared. Yeah. But, uh, the first one that I found in the wild was at Parlor in Crossroads. And I was on a date with my girlfriend on our anniversary. Nice. And we walk into parlor and I look behind the bar in the cooler and I see it sitting right there in the front, just listening. Yeah. And I said, Hey, can I have that PBR? And the bartender's like, uh, I guess so. And so she takes it out and goes to open it and cracks it, and puts it on the bar. I was like, that's me. What are you talking about? It's my name. Yeah, on that's the front my name. I, I, I did that. That's mine. It's the first one I've ever seen. And she realized what I was talking about. She's like, oh, shit, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was super excited to have it. And I drank it while I was there. And I asked her, I was like, can I take this home? She's like, I'll let you do that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I have it at home. It's sitting on a bar cart in our kitchen right now. Yeah. And I have a sick pack of full ones. Sick. Yeah. I had to go find them. Uh, what being, sort of prize did you get off that? Uh, it's a $10,000 prize. Oh shit! It's um, they threw me a party here in town. All the artists that won this last uh, design contest. It was the tenth anniversary of the contest, so they picked ten winners. Okay. So all so they gave out a hundred grand. They gave out a hundred grand. And usually they only give out ten. Yeah, ten to one artist the previous yeah. nine years, and they haven't done it again since. That's twenty twenty two. No shit. Yeah. So our names are still up on their website under papsblueribbon dot com slash art. Wow. So it's still there. They haven't changed it. Um, I wonder why they haven't done the contest again. There was, I think, a change in upper management. Yeah. Something switched, like, during the process of the contest while they were talking to us about next steps and the rollout of the cans and that sort of thing. Like, the person who was communicating with us changed. Yeah. So, I don't know if it's a change in what the company wants to do in terms of direction. We'll see. They might've been like, yo, Steve, we told you you had 10 G's, not a hundred grand to blow on this fucking bullshit. <laughs> Maybe somebody got in trouble. Yeah. Somebody might've fucking lost their job. Oh no. That. But that's a pretty sick, uh, come up though. Yeah. Like, that's a sick bonus paycheck. Worth the effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they threw me a party in, uh, that guy is probably just like, dude, like 72 people entered, 38 of them are this Ben guy. I'm just, he's just <laughs> going, to, going to win. I think they said there were like 7,000 entries no the shit. last time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. And it was exciting to watch. They did like, they narrowed it down to 25 initially, and then they put it up to public vote. Right. So then from those 25, they parsed and got the 10 that. That got the Took most the votes. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. That's how you know you had a good design. I guess so. The people have spoken. How did you get involved in the Parade of Hearts deal? Same approach. Same approach. It's an open call for artists. And they have a... You go to the website and it has like instructions and they have a template that you download. So... I just downloaded like the PDF template that gives you the shape of the heart and the space that you're going to be working with. And it's a design submission contest. Wow. So I drew it on my iPad and sent it to him and somebody picked it. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently that's one that you can win more than once because there are artists that have done it this go round that have done it previous years. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think Ken did it again this year and I think he did it last year too. Yeah. So that's a really cool thing. It's not like they're uh, preventing people from trying again. Yeah. So I it's will. also a weird thing because it's like a lot of artists don't work that way. Like it would be hard for me to be like, well, I'm going to draw this. Like, well, it's like, well, how do I draw metal flake on a yeah giant heart? It's like, 
I kind of just go with the flow. So I would be a guy that like they would, I would like turn something in, and then whatever I turned in <laughs> would not look anything like the what the render's not going to match. The render's not going to match <laughs> any, in any way, shape, or form what yeah. I've done. I had to be mindful of like how my drawing on a PDF was going to translate to a physical thing that I'd never dealt with or painted anything that size before. Like at most a canvas like this, maybe a little larger, but never anything that big. Yeah. So it was a huge project. It was really fun to work on. Get gremlins. Sounds like it, don't it? <laughs> Weird. Could be a road and there might be a fucking mouse walking across that fucking tin up there. Chupacabras. We've had a problem. <laughs> I got some neighbors that don't really do what they're supposed to do, so it's bled over into our house now, and we've been fighting them off. My dog keeps killing mice. It's sick. My schnauzer, he just like... <laughs> a schnauzer? He, yeah. He grabs him by the tail and like... <laughs> whip him? And then ends him, dude, instantly. It's oh, wild man. to watch, because he don't like... He knows what he's he, doing. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. It's crazy. He rules, but I got traps everywhere. I got... yeah. Poison. I've been. I've been doing it all. It's still. It's like, fuck. Where do they come from? You can't find them. You don't see them. Like, where mm. are they hide? Where are you guys hiding at? You know what I mean? Underground till they're not. That could be the dog walking around there too. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like it. it. Seems like there's something right up there. Yeah. I know where like I'm going to set a glue trap this week though. Yep. Catch those fuckers. Right in the window. Get them. Yeah, that heart thing's cool. That's a big. That's a big piece to paint. Mm-hmm. No, he said it was fun. It was a learning curve, a literal curve, because th the drawing digitally is flat, and then trying to figure out how to compensate for the fact that that the face of that heart on each side has a curve to it. Yeah, and trying to make straight lines on that is tricky. It's very tricky. I'm sure that's something that you deal with with like a gas tank. Yeah. For oh example. yeah. Oh yeah. Like, you visualize you something, like, but then like that's why it would be really hard to to. To make a thing, because you'd have to, to like do with the kind of shit I do. It would be very. I should try to enter that next year just to see. Yeah. Convince them. I guess it. I, it ain't too long before they start that whole deal. Really, it right? May not be. Um, they just started. Well, last weekend they started rolling out the hearts. Yeah. On but Sunday. I mean to like pick the people and give you like how much time did you have to paint it? Three, four months. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that process has to start here. And the selection process? Yeah. I guess I better get to work. I already got an idea for another one. I just yeah, got to put the work Yeah, I'm going to have to get in. on that. you have to keep me posted. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to see what we can do. I'll <laughs> plead seen. my case to the council. Yeah. I got. I also intend to go find them all. Yeah. There's a hundred of them. There's an app for your phone that you can use to, like, check into each one with the QR code. Oh, nice. It, like, marks it off the list. So, a little scavenger. Yeah, hunt. there's a, this junky park up the street by my old house. House on it's on 13th and Central, huh? but they put this one out there that had like a fishing pole on it and a plastic cooler. And I was like, "You idiots! So the junkies the are just fucking destroyed it." <laughs> I think I'd I be, saw that one. I'd be up there walking the dog, and I mean, dude, there's, I mean, it's we could go there right now, and somebody's sitting there smoking crack and shooting heroin. Like <laughs> it's it's a junkie park. Got the nods, and yeah, no, like I mean, you could watch them. They'll be in there with the mm -hmm. crack pipe hanging out their mouth and a needle in their veins. But, uh, like, I would sit there. It'd be, like, almost dark on, like, a Saturday night. And then there'd be, like, some fucking car cruise up from a part of town where I'm just like, what are you doing? And, like, this, like, the whitest people you ever seen from the suburbs jump out like, oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> and then, like, this, then they're becoming some, like, schizophrenic, like, crackhead walking down the street screaming. And they're, like, their faces. I'm what like, do do? Uh, I just look at them like, do you know where you're at right now? And they're like, well, we just came to see the heart. I'm like, you should probably take your photo and get out of here. <laughs> like, come back during the daytime. Dude, why like, would you do that at night? This is, not a, this is not a dusk. This isn't where you go at dusk, ma'am. Like, don't bring your children down here after dark. Like, park this closes is, at four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't want to be here after fucking 3 p.m. <laughs> that is wild, not happy hour. No, it's not happy hour. <laughs> Um, how did you get involved in the car stuff? Is that just, you just always been into cars or? Always been into cars. I remember when I was a kid going to car shows with my dad. Yeah. And uh, there was a place in Des Moines called Porky's Drive-In. 
And it was like old school diner had like horseshoe parking lot that went all the way around the back. And the diner was like up close to the street. So you could like pull your cars in, have your car show. And they would have like, I think at one point they had the roller skate uh, servers and stuff yeah, that yeah, would bring yeah. food out to your cars. I think they did away with that later and it's now gone. Yeah. But like, I distinctly remember car shows at that place. And, um, yeah, going to that stuff with my dad. Um, also he had a lot of car adjacent hobbies, like right. the sailboats. So right, we'd always right, get in the right. car and go to the lake with the boat and like being in the car was part of it growing up in the car and on the boat. Um, he was also into like RC cars and RC boats. Yep. So the fuel that those things ran on is something that is super distinct, like triggering memory. Nitro. If I smell that stuff, I'm a child again. Yeah. It's just nitro. It's just yeah. the same shit. They drive. My dad has a, mm-hmm. has a RC car track. Yeah. That nitro fuel, that smell yeah. is just and so they, nostalgic. He does all electric, but I, I grew up around RC yeah. cars, so I knew they would do gas. Sometimes we would go watch gas powered cars, but that's a whole different league of RC car racing. It was like core memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a, I spent a lot of time racing RC cars as a kid. Then I got into photography and I'm not particularly fond of taking pictures of people because often people aren't particularly fond of the picture that's taken of them. Yeah. Cars don't complain. No, they're always pretty. Yeah. Well, then people nowadays, everybody's like, oh, like they take a photo and then they're showing it to the person. It's like, yeah, just take the photo, dude, and go about your day. Like, I also am real particular about getting people in photos of cars that I'm taking. Like, yeah. I will sit and I will wait until, until there's, there's not, not a person. someone in my shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And I will try to be mindful of, like, if I'm shooting with my film camera, I'm real deliberate to be mindful of what's in the background, like people, but also things that give away time period. Yeah. Like if I can get a shot of a car that doesn't make it obvious that we're in present day, a little ambiguity to when it was taken. I like that. Yeah. Well, it makes it timeless that way. Yeah. Uh, There's not a Chrysler 300 in the background. Right, right, right. There's not a Kia, brand new Kia Uh back there. A brand new Kia with a window smashed. Yeah. Like you do. Well, you'd be glad to know I set dates today for cars and for gearheads and ground. So love it. May to August, we'll be doing that. Well, I've got new digital cameras to learn how to use, but I still got the old film one too. I have digital's fun. You'll like it. it yeah. it'll it's just a different tool. Yeah, I mean, I have all the thirty-five millimeter digitized, so yeah. it just saves me a few steps and some money. Well, it doesn't have that warmth, but yeah, I'll still use that sometimes. You can find out how to. But you can create the warmth with that camera. It's just a matter of fucking with the settings. That's it's no different than this. Like yeah, I can learn technology. Yeah, you can learn it. It's mm-hmm. not it's not bad. Do you have a car? Yeah, I have two. I've got my daily, and I've got a little. Uh, I have a 1980 Fiat Spider. That's in, right. That's right. Brina. I knew you had like a foreign car. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember what yep, it was. Yeah, it needs some work, but sitting in the driveway. Yeah, easily done. Mm-hmm. Just got to work on it. <laughs> I always tell people, just do an hour a week on it. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, shit, I want to get this going. And then you're like, two hours a week. And then you're like, okay, I got a lot of free time here that I'm wasting. And I'm going to I'm gonna go work on that, you know? Yeah, another one of those things. There's a learning curve. I think buying tools and parts is the barrier for me. I don't have the tools to replace the head gasket on that thing on my own. <laughs> mm. So that's that's why it's sitting. Yeah, I we can assist you with that. That's pretty easily <laughs> done. That's not too bad. At some point. You got some of that 10G lying around probably still, so you could probably just throw <laughs> some of that at it. I know some people that come fix your head gasket. Uh, but that's a weird one because it's an old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've talked to a couple of people who have worked on them before and who have owned them. And they're, Is it like an inline six? Uh, it's four cylinder. Four cylinder. Mm-hmm. Oh, even easier. Yeah. Yeah, dude. All you would need is like basic, uh, like, yeah, you just need some sockets. Yeah. I mean, pretty basic stuff that I can get easily. Yeah. I've got like a Chilton's manual for it in the trunk. 
Oh yeah, dude. That I found at an estate sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was like, hang on, this is for 1980s foreign cars. I flipped through it. It's like a whole compendium of different cars. But I was like, ooh, Fiat. There it is. Yeah. This is mine. One dollar, great. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I found. I have four Dodge manuals that are all different for the green van, and I have three for my G van, my Chevy. That's at work. You haven't seen it. You haven't been around since. I, yeah, I've been putting a motor and shit in it. Mm-hmm. And then I have two. I have three for the safaris that are all different. If I find yeah. a different manual I don't have, I get it because <laughs> I have one for the Dodge that's from the late seventies, early eighties, mm-hmm. like right when the van was made. And it's it's like so much more in depth for like technical data on like. It has like a thing about the exact lashing for all the valves. It has this like chart for all the years oh, wow. of the van in it. And then like the later ones are have a little bit better pictures because they're bigger. The drawings are better and the photos are better in them. But yeah, dude, you just need like some big sockets. Like we could, we could yeah. go to Harbor Freight with a hundred bucks and I could help you get every <laughs> tool you'd need. And then I could send you down to my buddy's machine shop to get the head done. <laughs> to get the head looked over. I need to do that one of these days, but it's been on the back burner for a while. Is it just leaking? Uh, uh, it smokes. It likes to overheat. It needs the pretty much everything that's rubber in it. The gaskets, the hoses, the belts, all of that needs replaced because it's 40-some years old. Oh, yeah. It's easily done, dude. Yeah. It's radiator easy, easy. hoses collapse when it pressurizes so it doesn't cool properly. It's not circulating the timing belt is frayed, needs to be replaced before it snaps and something goes real bad. Yeah, it probably needs valve seals. It probably needs a head job more so than a head gasket. Somebody that I talked to about that car said that there's like an upper gasket and a lower gasket, something along those lines, and the lower one has a tendency to have a problem with leaking. Yeah. And it sounds like it might be leaking down somewhere I can't see where it's coming from. Yeah. And it's probably that. Yeah, because if it's smoking, it could be oil getting it past the cylinder wall or antifreeze getting into the cylinder walls or it's oil burning from yeah. the from the top end being bad. But Hard that's not you just need to take it apart, dude. That's yep. it. That's the way you find out. That's all you do? Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. That's how I found out the Dodge had two bent push rods in it and Ooh. two stuck valves. So I took the push rods out, hammered them back out straight with a hammer, and then uh, we sat there for hours fucking tapping the valves body down. body workout push rods? Tap the valves down, and then I'd whack it to like let it spring back up, then tap the valve down, and then whack it to let it spring back up. That's funny. Eventually, we got them unstuck. I put the push rods back in. Been driving it ever since. Nice. Yeah. If only newer things were that easy to fix. Yeah, no. We should be able to fix more things with a hammer. Just generally, I'm going to put that out there. I don't. That's why, like, I won't. People tell me how much they spend on cars, and it just blows my mind because I haven't spent more than the most I ever spent on a vehicle. Two thousand bucks, maybe to fix it. No, to buy, to to purchase it. I've never bought a car for more than two thousand (laughs) dollars. Out of pocket, me neither. No, no, I spent like six on that. Yeah, yeah, two G's is the most I've ever spent on. Like that's daily drivers. Yeah, I'm driving those every day. I drove that daily for like nine months, I dro- and that's my '75 Chevy. I bought it was eighteen hundred bucks. That's the most expensive car <laughs> I've bought in years, and I drove it all the way back from uh, Garden City, Kansas. I think I paid sixteen hundred. I talked to that. Maybe it's thirteen hundred. I don't know. The dude wanted eighteen. I know I talked him down. Either way, it's not bad for something you can get in and drive home. Yeah, and I if I was scared to drive it that day, and it was getting dark. So uh, my old lady at the time was with me, and I was like, "Fuck it!" And then I had some friends that lived in Dodge City, so I took it there, and I left it at their house. Taking the Dodge to come. Dodge City. No, it was a Chevy. It was a Chevy, Chevy 75 oh, Chevy. Man. And then I was going to come back and get it with the truck and trailer. Could never make it happen. So finally one day she's like, let's just go get your fucking van. And I'm like, all <laughs> right. So we drove out there and I drove it all the way back. Uh, no down reason to 70. be afraid. Nah, cruising down 70. I had an earbud in. I had headphones, plug-in headphones into my phone, like trying to like drone out. I was like getting 
inundated with exhaust smoke and like it had all these little issues. It's like, what the fuck is going on? We fixed a couple things on the side of the road, but we trucked it back. We stopped in one town. Maybe we stopped in Salina or something to get something for dinner. And I just, we parked it at a truck stop on the highway and left it there. And then I went, and I was the whole time I was like, oh, somebody's going to steal my fucking van. But then it was, we went back and of course it was there. But yeah. I drove that thing all during the pandemic, dude. It had a 350 in it. I drove it. It had really shitty old body work done to the front end. It had been hit before. Okay. So I took it apart to redo it, and then I was working on it, and that's when I had this. I had a heart attack. Oh, damn. And then since then, for like the last three years, I've been like scared to work on it. So I finally started like talking about how I was scared to work on it. So then I got it towed from my parents' house over to the shop at work. And now I, I took the motor out and sold it. Because I got an LS engine. Oh. And so the LS, <laughs> the block is at uh, the machine shop. And I'm rebuilding. I'm going to build. I, I, I'm, I, in my 40 years, I never built a motor. Nice. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to build a motor at least once. Time to start. And I took it apart and was like, oh, I'm an idiot. I could have been doing this. Shit. This is the work of morons. Like, anybody could do it. This is like anything with a car. Like, anybody could literally fix their own car. I, I'm sure I could if I sat down and figured out how to work on those things. Like if I can fix a computer without the manual, I can figure out how to fix a car. Yeah. If you, ha- but you have the manual. Yeah. So like even with the manual, it's like, take out this bolt, this bolt, this bolt. And then yep. when you go to put it back together, it tells you where, which bolt to tighten down and how much to tighten it down. Like it's all there. Like the it's all the instructions. Turn the, the screws. instructions are literally mm-hmm. step mechanics get step-by-step instructions. It's different. Cause in my world, we don't have that. Like, when somebody crashes a quarter panel, it's like, yeah, fix it. Paint or body Like, work, you just like, know how to fix it. Yeah. Like, you either cut it out or you have to know how to work the metal. You know what I mean? It's you so got like, steps. They're just not in writing as Body much. work's more artistic. Mechanics is more engineering, mm-hmm. I guess, you know? Yeah. More of a science. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah, dude. I, uh... Yeah, you got to get that Fiat going to take that to the, the shows with you. I took it to one car show when I first got it. It was during the pandemic. I bought it in 2020. I was like, I need a car. I would gotten a new job. I was like, I got to be able to get back and forth. I was taking the bus from the plaza to North KC. That sucked. That's like an hour ride each way. Yeah. I like, I'm getting a car. I had that for nine months. It started snowing. I was like, this is not a snow car. Yeah. It's not a winter car at all. The convertible top, that thing does not hold heat. Yeah. Barely produced heat. <laughs> yeah. So I I used Carvana and had a car delivered to my front door. Not, what'd you buy? What's your, your... It was a 2013 thing. Jetta. Oh, sick. A little Volkswagen. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Reliable. I have not had any issues with it. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood. You got that Nazi car, dude. Oh, shit. The Führers. The, the Führers. The Führers ride. I feel like they like Mercedes more, but I don't know. I'm oh, no he did something with Volkswagen. Like, he helped, I don't know. There's some shit with Hitler and Volkswagen and Ford. And Ford. There's all the conspiracies about it. Yeah, I've, I've seen surface level. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I've yeah. not dove into we, any we of that. We don't need to dive deep on Nazi lore <laughs> no, here I'm, today. I'm good. <laughs> then people start getting mad. They get mad. Then I have to tell everybody how I don't like Nazis. Same. Not then, a man. Then I get mad when I tell them how much I like Jewish people. That makes them real mad. Which, <laughs> and then in turn you makes me win? go, are you sure you're not a Nazi? <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> See. <laughs> Nazis, Nazis still exist. They just have weird uh, multicolored hair and piercings. And then they scream at you about what people of color need. Those are the new Nazis. Uh-oh. They they're all around us. Try to avoid those situations. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Me too. Freakazoids. Used to love being around freakazoids. The older I get, the more I'm just like, man, I stick to the car people. <laughs> yeah, they, I, uh, they tend to keep it about the cars. I like I like that about the car people. Yeah, none yeah. of the rest of that shit matters. You uh-huh. know what I mean. Hey, what do you got under the hood? Yeah. No, not that hood. The car. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh I'll put all of Ben's links to shit, whatever you got, I'll put it in the comments. They can find you, the Instagram, nope. the yeah. the stuff. Check out his art. You're gonna see him at car events if you're in the city. Uh if you need your if you're an Apple mark, if you're <laughs> if you're a loser that uses Apple products, you could probably go get them repaired by him. Uh, I'd rather take cool. pictures of your cars than you. fix your phone. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, <laughs> let's let's get some car photo shoots set up. I'm down. We should talk about that. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.